Does a death in the afternoon require a loose effect? I don't know, let's find out. My name's David Edwards and this is Booze on the Rocks where we make cocktails for everyone. Now this drink was created by Ernest Hemingway and he was a very well-known American novelist. Incredibly well-known actually. He's also known to have had a hair fetish and been an alcoholic and supposedly diabetic. However, with the amount of alcohol that he drank, I don't quite believe the diabetic part. Maybe, but we'll see. Anyways, so the reason I got into this cocktail was because a bunch of other channels started making this cocktail. And I went, you know what, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna jump on the bandwagon. So I reached into my shelf and I grabbed my Hills Absinthe. And in the process of getting ready to film, I held the bottle up to the light for my old man eyes because I could finally read the back and it said, does not loosh. And I went, what are you talking about? Doesn't loosh? Doesn't absence require a loosh? And apparently that is not the case. So what I did is I went to my local liquor store and I got the only absences I can get, which in this case we have Dillon's, we have Hills, and we have Lucid. Now they have three different ABVs, which is pretty impressive because this is actually the strongest at 70%. However, the Dillon's is 67% and the Lucid Superior is 62%. So we have some different varying uh, ABVs, which should give us different flavors and different ethanol burns. But will all three of these loush or not? Because we know the Hills won't loosh, and I want to do the experiment, so I'll make all three versions of this cocktail to see which one looshes and which one doesn't, and does it make a difference in flavor? So, it's simple, it's easy, this is a build in your glass cocktail. Now, grab the glass that you're going to use. In this case, I'm using a champagne flute because Hemingway said that this A, it should be in a champagne flute. These carry about six, six and a half ounces, depending on the side. And his ingredients and method to make this work, one jigger of absinthe and fill the rest until the appropriate amount of milkiness ensues, which would be about four and a half uh, ounces of uh, champagne. And it, the champagne had to be cold. He was specific on that. So for the champagne, we're going to use Segura Viva, Segura Viudas, it's reserva to cava. A cava is a Spanish sparkling wine. It is a dry sparkling wine. And if you're new to cocktails, this is maybe not a cocktail you want to try because this is going to be a high alcohol content. Now on any sparkling wine or champagne, grab your bottle, give it a slight twist, give it a slight twist and control the bottle. So, ooh, look at that. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we are going to start with the Dylan's absence. We need one ounce, 30 milliliters, four and a half ounces or 135 milliliters sparkling wine. Oh, look at that. There's a little bit more milkiness, but it is not as milky as I expected it to be, which is perfect. This is a great test of how different alcohols and the compounds that build those alcohols actually go in. So let's put that one off to the side here. Next, what we'll do is we will grab the Hills Absence. And what we'll do is again, we'll add an ounce and a half or 45 milliliters. The same amount of sparkling wine. Oh, look at that. A totally different color and not milky at all. This is going to be a particularly fun test. It might be dangerous, so we'll see if I can actually get this edited out on time. Now, the last thing we need is the Lucid Absence Supreme. Now this apparently is the uh, lowest of the alcohol amounts at 62% ABV. However, it's apparently made in the traditional French style. And for that we need an ounce and a half or 45 milliliters. Finally, four and a half ounces, 135 milliliters sparkling wine. Oh, look at that. What? There's a huge difference in color there and milkiness. Totally different. And we're gonna break this down and look at it because look at that. 
This is the Dillon's, this is the Hills, and this is the Lucid. Now this one is supposed to be made in the traditional style. This is made locally in Ontario, and this is made in Czechoslovakia. So let's give it a try and see if I die. But first, I have a little bit of water just to clear my throat. So let's see uh, how close I get to dying. Wow. Not very strong on the absence, but you can feel it's definitely got a bit of a kick. I can feel the warmth in my stomach right there. Ooh, um, that's gonna be interesting. The absence isn't, doesn't taste strong in that one. Let's try this one. Totally different flavor. I taste <clears throat> more of the cava in this one than I do in the hills. I taste a little bit less of the anise. And that could explain for the difference in milkiness level. Let's try the uh, Lucid. Strong. This actually has a stronger anise flavor. It buries more of the, uh, the sparkling wine or the champagne. It feels and tastes stronger. So if Ernest was drinking three to five of these a day, slowly of course, that man's liver was heroic. Cause I'm telling you, I'm gonna drink these because I never throw my cocktails out. Am I gonna rush out to have one of these? No. Are you gonna rush out to have one of these? Please let me know down in the comments down below. Which of these would you prefer to try just based on what you see and the ingredients provided before? And if you think that we should change anything, please leave that comment. Now, if this is your first time to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification. That way, every time we put up a new video, you will be notified. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check us out at patreon.com forward slash booze on the rocks because every little bit helps us to bring these videos to you. And I don't know if I'm gonna get through this night of editing. <laughs> You have a great day. <laughs>